Hi there! I'm Russell Conti with The Soapbox. Thanks for joining me today. A few months ago, I was approached by Nancy's Notions to see if I could come up with a project with their So Simple Dresden template. It's an incredible little template that I've had a lot of fun with. And so the first project was an apron that we did. And now this is a riff on that same project, and this time you'll be making a wall caddy. So without further ado, let's get right to it. First, let's go over the tools you'll need for this project. You'll want sewing with Nancy's So Simple Dresden template. It comes with a template and it comes with the pattern instructions on how to utilize it for different sizes and types. You'll want a rotary cutter, a ruler, and a mat. Get your mat at least 18 inches by 24 inches. That way you can accommodate one fold of the fabric when you're using 45 inch wide goods. Some good quality pins. I like clover flower head pins. They're very sharp and long. They work really nicely. Some fabric shears, some thread trimming scissors are helpful. You'll want some size 70 sharp needles for your piecing. That's what I like to use. A seam ripper and a stiletto. The stiletto will help you turn some of those corners we need to turn. I like to use Roxanne's glue based and I'll show you how we use that shortly. You'll also want an 18 millimeter turner. This is a clover bias tape turner. And then I like to use a friction pen for doing all my marking because the nice thing about this is that once you set heat to it, the markings vanish. That covers our tools for the time being. Let's talk a little bit about fabric. To accommodate the fabric for the flower pot, it has three components. It has the top, it has the base of the flower pot, and then it has the background. The top, you'll need a third of a yard. For the pot, you'll need a half of a yard. And for the background, you'll need a quarter of a yard. That will net en enough for nine pots. For the sunflower, you're going to want a backing, and I used muslin. You can use any type of fabric that you'd like for that. But in any event, you'll want three 12 by 12 squares of that. So a third of a yard will be plenty for your muslin. You'll also want three squares that are six by six inches that you'll cut into circles for the back of the center of the flower. To construct the petals and enough for the flower, you simply need one piece of fabric four inches wide, selvage to selvage, and that will net enough for 24 petals. This flower takes 20 petals, so you have some extras. If you want to change the colors out, then you'll need enough for that as well. But this project calls for nine flower pot pockets. And for each pocket, you're going to need one flower pot, and so we want nine bases, we want nine flower pot tops, and we want 18 of the flower pot backgrounds in total. In order to construct those, what we're going to do is we're simply going to take the side seams here, and our seam allowances at this point are one quarter of an inch, and we'll sew those together. That will net us this piece right there, sewn at a quarter of an inch. Once you've sewn them a quarter of an inch, take them and press your seam allowances open. Once you press the seam allowances open between the background and the flower pot, then go ahead and attach the top of the flower pot faces together or right sides together using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. This is going to get covered in just a moment by another stitch. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to actually finish this so that when it's done there are no visible seams. What we're going to do is we're simply to take the flower pot and we're going to roll it up we're going to blanket the flower pot and bring the flower pot top back to itself. Okay, so there's the top that we sewed. We've rolled the other piece inside and we're just going to match up those edges. Once we've matched up those edges, we'll sew this at a quarter inch again and then we'll pull it right side out. Once you've sewn it, you'll see two rows of stitching on one side, our last row of stitching at a quarter of an inch, our first row of stitching at one eighth we'll pull them face out. So we're just going to pull from one end. Take your time. It may want to fight you and it may not feel like it doesn't want to come out, but it will. There we go. There we are, and we have no raw edges on the top. The top is completely enclosed. Once you've done that, you'll go ahead and press it from the front and from the back, and press toward the flower pot top so we can get that crease nice. Once we've sewn those, we're gonna sew them together. We're gonna to make rows of three. The one thing you're gonna notice about the block is that it is not precisely square. It's narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. The reason that is, is once we get ready to finish this, we're gonna go ahead and move those so that this bottom line is square and completely straight. 
What that's going to do is create a little bellows in the pocket at the top so it rounds and stays open a little bit. Right. And I've sewn these together using a half inch seam allowance and then I press the seam allowances open and press the upper edge on a diagonal down so that it's biased and that way that raw edge won't show at the top once we get ready to construct the piece. You're going to set up three rows of these pots. You need 20 wedges to create the petals for each flower and again one strip of fabric selvage to selvage which is 45 inches wide will net you about 24 petals. Using the Sewing with Nancy Sew Simple Dresden template, you're going to place the template on the 4 inch mark, making certain that it's square to the edge and you're going to cut both sides. It's that simple. That's why I really like the template. It makes life really easy for this project. After you've cut the first one, simply go through a line, a line here and here, and you'll cut the next one. Once you've cut your wedges, you're going to assemble eight pairs of the wedges. To four of those wedges, add an additional piece. So you're going to end up with four sets of three and four sets of two. And you'll want to press them each time that you make them. It makes the pressing much easier. Make sure you press your seam allowances open. It'll reduce the bulk. Once you've assembled the pairs and the trios, then go ahead and assemble them into a set of five. And then again, press your seam allowances open. I assembled my circle by making quadrants. Once you've sewn a quadrant, then check it against your mat. Sometimes they're not quite square when you finish up, and we want them to be square so that there's no bubbling that happens in the middle or the exterior of the flower. We want it to lay as flat as possible. And so if yours is a little bit off, and in my case you can see it's just a little bit off on one side, I can simply slip this down a little bit and then trim the excess in from this corner or I can split the difference and take it out of two petals. So I can take it from this one and this one just by moving it on the mat just a little bit and trimming just the little excess that needs to be trimmed out. Once you've sewn a quadrant, then sew a quadrant into a half, check that it's still square, and that you have your half completed. Go ahead and sew the halves together and you'll complete one full circle for each flower. Once you've done that, go ahead and stay stitch the inside edge. And stay stitch is simply a stitch that's put into the fabric to keep it from separating. Since we didn't back stitch on any of these, if we don't do that, these will tend to pull when we get ready to turn this face out. Once you've created your basic flower shape and you've stay stitched the interior edge, turn it so that the wrong side is face up. Using the template provided in the pattern instructions, you're going to place the template on each wedge, aligning the bottom of the template with the wedge and then tracing around the top with a friction pen. Again, the friction, the benefit of the friction pen is simply that it, the marks go away under the heat of the iron. You're going to do that all the way around. We want the intersection of each petal to align with the intersection of each wedge so that when we get ready to sew this again, we'll have that anchored right at the intersection of each petal. Once you've traced your template, onto each petal, retrieve the piece of muslin and faces together, or wrong sides out, right sides in. We're going to pin all layers together. Once it's pinned, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to follow the lines carefully, pivoting at each intersection of each wedge. So we create clean, sharp turns at each petal intersection. I like to use a 1.8 or 1.6 millimeter stitch length that makes it a little tighter and a little easier to negotiate these curves. We'll do that and then we'll go ahead and trim the excess away. Once you've sewn the perimeter, you're going to go ahead and turn it to the muslin side. And we want to trim the seam allowances down to about an eighth of an inch. You want to be pretty aggressive about this so that they turn successfully. We'll do that all the way around. It's also why we want to use a short stitch length so that the fabric still has integrity and so does the sewing line. If the stitch was too long, I wouldn't be able to cut this closely without risking pulling through the fabric once it's been turned. Once you've cut all the flower petals, now we need to clip into the 
intersections of the flower petals. And we want to clip right to the stitching but not through it. Right at that intersection. Just like that. Very close so that when we turn them face out, they'll turn without getting a little pucker. So right to the stitches but not through the stitches. Again, that's why the stitch length is real important that we diminish it at this point. Otherwise, again, we couldn't be this aggressive with our clipping. See that right there? Just a couple threads away from it. Now that it's been clipped, it's ready to be turned. That's why we've stay stitched this edge so that we can pull through here without separating those stitches. And then using your fingertip, just press those petals out. Once the petals are turned out, we're going to go take it to the ironing board and press them. And we want to retain the curvature of each petal end. So be careful about that. And what I do is sometimes come in with my stiletto, just grab a little bit of fabric and help it as I'm working at the ironing board to get those petals nicely rounded. For the flower stems, cut a piece of fabric 1 and 3 8 inches cross grain, selvage to selvage. Now you can do cross grain or you can do bias. I'm using a clover bias tape maker, an 18 millimeter size. Um, typically you'd cut it on bias so that you can take curves nice. Since we're doing a stem and I'm not going to curve it at all, I don't need it to be on bias. And I can still use the bias tape maker in the same fashion for fabric that is cut on grain or cross grain. The way you use this is cut a little arrow at the beginning and feed it into the bias tape maker. You're going to do this at the ironing board. You'll also want your stiletto. Your stiletto will help you scoop through that little opening right there so you can retrieve the tip on the other end. And it just automatically turns the fabric so that the edges fold and will press on this side. Now that you've sewn your three rows of flower pots, you've prepared your stem, and you've sewn your flowers, you're ready to, for final construction. Let's get to it. Twenty-seven inches down from the fold from the top, make a mark on one side of your fabric and the other, and we're going to connect that with a straight line. Use my friction pen again simply because that will iron away. Once we've placed that line, we're going to place that row of pots centered on that line from each side. Now this finished piece should be 24 and a half inches wide at the bottom. It will be wider at the top. It won't finish wider, but I'll explain that in a moment. Now you'll notice as we place this on the line that the center pot fits quite nicely, but that the end pots come down a little bit more. And again, the reason that is is simply so we can lift this up and what that will do is by keeping this perpendicular, this line right here, it will allow these pots to have a little bit of an opening at the top so that the pocket bellows a little bit. So you want to measure this distance here and this distance and make sure they're the same. Pin in place. Pin at the intersection. Pin at the next intersection. And finally the last one. And again, the goal is to have this line of the bottom of the pots sit flat against the other line. We'll pin in the center here. And then we're going to sew from end to end at one quarter of an inch from the edge. Once you've stitched them a quarter of an inch, you're going to go ahead and fold them into place and press the bottom line. We're not going to sew them yet because we still need to place our stems and we want our stems to be hidden by the flower pots. So we need to move those out of the way in order to sew those successfully. 
What I do want to do is determine where I want my flowers to sit. And this is just a matter of preference, there's not a right or wrong. I think I want them kind of like that. Great. Once I've got them placed, I'm going to go ahead and pin them so I can determine where my stems need to go. Now what I'm going to do is simply take my friction pen and a ruler and find where I want that stem to be. I want it to go down into the pot about four inches just to hide it and I want it to go up about an inch or two into the flower. Do the same thing here roughly where I think it should be. Go down about four inches into the pot and one or two inches into the flower. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and remove my flowers. And then cut my stems to length. Another great use of Roxanne's glue baste, I'm going to baste right along the edges of my fabric that's been turned for my stems. And then I'm going to applique the stems in place using, I use a straight stitch, but you can use whatever decorative stitch you like. Don't worry about the ends, they'll be captured. Don't worry about the ends, they'll be hidden by the flower pot and the flower. I'm just going to center this right over my line. and then I will heat set it with the iron. If you're concerned about moving it to the iron once you've done this, you can actually just set it, let it air dry. It'll take a bit perhaps about 20 minutes or so, but it is an option. And see, they'll be hidden there, and then they will be hidden under our flowers. I'm going to take Once your stems are sewn in place, go ahead and fold the flower pot pockets back into place. Again, it's three and a quarter inches in from each side, so make a mark here on this side at three and a quarter inches to determine where the edge should be, and three and a quarter inches on this side. You'll pin those. and then distribute the difference between them. Now in a perfect world, these should be perpendicular to this folded edge here. So I'm going to bring that this way just a wee bit. Like I said, there's going to be a little bit of a bellows in each one. And the same thing on this side. Once we're pinned in place, we're ready to edge stitch the sides and the bottoms, and then the separation of the pockets. We're going to start here. 
about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, come down, pivot, come across, an eighth of an inch from the sewing line, pivot again and come up. At the top, pivot across, come across a whole quarter of an inch, so that'll get you an eighth of an inch on the other side, come back down. Pivot at the bottom at an eighth of an inch away from the edge, and continue as such until the whole thing is anchored in place. It's not a bad choice to box these corners, it simply means sewing in a little bit of a box. That'll stabilize this corner so it doesn't end up wanting to rip away from the fabric if you end up putting anything too heavy in the pocket. Once your first row of flower pots are in place, your next job is simply to determine how far apart you'd like the rest of them to sit. And that's simply a matter of preference, not a right or wrong. You can either stack them like this or put some space between. Just a matter of preference. I'm going to put about an inch between, so I'm going to find out where the bottom is. I'm going to place a mark, and that's going to determine where my line is going to be for my next set of pots. Once I determine that distance, and it's nine and a half, I'll mark it both ends at nine and a half, connect my line, and then I'm going to sew the pots in place just as I did the first row. I'll continue in the same fashion for the last row. We're ready for our flowers. We're just going to overlap our stems just a little bit and then get a sense about how we'd like them to be placed. There we go, I think I'm good with that. Once I have a good sense about that, I'm gonna go ahead and move the one that's gonna be on the overlap out of the way. I'm gonna use my friction pen just to give me a few marks to indicate where the placement should be. So at the top of each petal, or every other petal in this case. And that'll tell me where it needs to be placed once I've adhered it. Now we're going to do the same technique that we used for attaching the stems. We're going to take the Roxanne's glue paste and put a bead close to the edge all the way around. And then using your favorite applique technique, once you've heat set this, you'll go ahead and sew it to the background. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the project. If you have any questions about it whatsoever, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can. In the meantime, have a great day sewing.